Hey everybody, Bill Murphy here with MMORPG.com with another episode of MMOFTW here for you. A um, lot of stuff happening, a lot of stuff that I really don't feel comfortable talking about, specifically right now the Derek Smart, uh, Robert, Chris Roberts, uh, Robert Space Industries, Star Citizen stuff. You, If you are following MMOs or gaming in general at all, no doubt you have heard about the Chris Roberts, Derek Smart ordeal. There's an awesome podcast by our own Chris Koch on the website uh, called Game On, and where we actually talk to Derek and get his side of the story. We've also reached out to Chris Roberts, and we have uh, hopefully some stuff coming from him in the next week or so because he's been on travel for work. Um, obviously, the Star Citizen guys have been reaching out with a lot of updates about the game. In, in light of all the accusations from Derek Smart. But really, I, I don't want to speak out on my opinion here because I feel like um, it, it's like... <laughs> It's dangerous, right? It's dangerous to say anything. Uh, in one ca in one hand, I understand where Derek Smart's coming from as a customer. In the other hand, I understand where a company lies with what they are trying to do and trying to develop. And, uh, you know, maybe people need to be patient. Maybe Derek Smart has been patient and is now just kind of, uh, you know, blowing his top. And there are probably other customers out there who don't speak out so publicly, who don't have such a public uh, facing position as Derek Smart, um, who are also feeling the same way he is. I, I am not a backer of Star Citizen, so I don't feel it's my place to complain, but I, I will say that, you know, it has been a while since we've heard, uh, when we first heard about Star Citizen, there was a lot of hype behind it. Obviously, it's one of the most wanted games on our website. Um, there are $85 million of uh, player-invested money in the game, and everybody just kind of wants to know what's going on and where the game is and how long we're going to have to wait before we actually get something more than a tech demo. So... I said I wasn't going to talk much about it, but there you are. That's all we're going to say about it this week. Now let's get to the really hardcore MMO news of the week that was. First up is the Imperial City coming to Elder Scrolls Online on August 31st for PC and Mac. It'll also be on the Xbox One on September 15th and on the PlayStation 4 on September 16th. The DLC, the very first DLC for Elder Scrolls Online Tamriel Unlimited since it went free to play, will be about $20 and it is really, really huge. That's 2,500 crowns in the in-game shop. However, if you are a subscriber, that's 15, you know, your $15 a month subscription fee that is still there. Well, uh, of ESO Plus, you will get the Imperial City entirely for free. There's a whole bunch of stuff coming in the Imperial City. Not It's not just, you know, like an open PvP area. It's actually a very much tied to the story of the game with a whole bunch of questing content, uh, new dungeons, sewers, safe areas, things like that, and it's all part of Cyrodiil, obviously, uh, because it's the Imperial City. It's what we have uh, haven't seen since, what was it, Oblivion, I think? So uh, head on over to the website. We've got a whole uh, nice preview, uh, a review of everything that we know about it so far from Ryan Getchell, our Elder Scrolls columnist, and we are actually heading to, uh, what do they call it, QuakeCon next week down in Dallas. Jason Winter will be there, and he'll be interviewing I believe Matt Fyror about the uh, about the expansion. Well, we'll call it an expansion, but the DLC game pack is what they're calling it. Um, so we'll have more info for you in the next week or two as well. And in Skyforge news, the open beta has officially begun, and in free-to-play terms, that means the game is essentially launched. They, uh, With the launch, they cut off the Founders packs where you could get early access to the Berserker and the... Well, other class, the Gunner class, and now you can buy what they're calling a Digital Collector's Edition, which will grant you early access to the Alchemist and Knight classes, which, by the way, are fantastic. The Alchemist, I haven't, I don't really care too much for him, but the Knight is a, a shield and spear-wielding tank who actually uppercuts people <laughs> for his finishing move. He's actually a lot of fun. Um, I got to play him in the beta, and now my finger is on the trigger for the uh, Collector's Edition, too, unless I'm lucky and I can convince those My.com guys that I need one for review purposes. I doubt it. Uh, we'll see, though. I'll, I'll keep you posted. As always, I'll be transparent if they give me one for free, because uh, working towards these classes in the game can be a bit of a grind. But we'll uh, we'll talk more about that in my review in the weeks to come. So yeah, so Skyforge is an open beta. It is a free-to-play MMO. Obviously, there's cash shop stuff and everything that you can buy too. But uh, if you want to give it a shot, you want to see if it's if it's your style of game, you can just head over to Skyforge.com and download it and get playing. Uh, it's a lot of fun. It's also you know. It's not the deepest, most, it's not like going to be an MMORPG that holds you for years, you know. Uh, I think it's more of a casual kind of game. 
a way that I put it, uh, it's like Destiny for PC gamers who like MMOs but not shooters because it's plays a little bit like uh, combat wise. It plays a little bit like Neverwinter. You know, um, give it a shot. If you if you may not like it, and that's fine. It, you know, not every game has to appeal to everybody, but uh, it's fun enough, and I'm uh, I'm enjoying my time with it so far. And in Arcage news, the latest producer's letter is out from Mer Merv Lee Kwai. It's a lengthy note on the game site that gives players a bit of a heads up about what is coming in both the immediate and more distant future for the game. Firstly, he reviews all that has happened with Arcage since the 2015 began, and it's a pretty impressive list of updates with a major nod going out to players for being agents in the change in the game. Meaning, if you were upset with a lot of things in Arcage, they heard your voices and a lot of things have changed. If you're still playing it, you probably realize that. If you haven't played it in a while, Merv uh, kind of insists that you come back and give it a shot and see if a lot of the changes that they've made are, are more up your, up your alley. However, beginning next week, players will look forward to seeing the first information about player-crafted submarines, a significant upgrade to the glider system, and later on in August, the Blue Salt Festival will arrive in-game. Now, further down the road, the devs have big plans for a new hero system where players can nominate faction members to rise in the political rank of hero. In addition, upgrades are coming to housing, build expeditions will be announced, pet and mount armor systems will be upgraded alongside a new level cap of 55, and much, much more. In addition, Merv takes his time to address some significant areas of concern that have been much discussed among players in the AA community, not Alcoholics Anonymous, the Arc Age community. Among other things, he brings up botting, RNG, exploits, live, and new servers. That's right, there will be new servers, there will also be a server merge, there's a whole bunch of stuff going on behind the scenes. I urge you to head over to MMORPG.com or the Arc Age site to get a look at all the things that are happening in Tryon's version of Arc Age from Excel Games. And just a kind of a cool little update here in the Star Wars The Old Republic news, nothing major, but Bioware has confirmed that the Togruta race will be coming playable beginning with the version 3.3 update that will be deployed on Tuesday next week, July 21st. Interestingly, devs also revealed that headgear on Togruta, because of the appendages, that's right, if you, if you know these guys, uh, they're very popular, um, especially with the animated series. The heads aren't typical. They have these, you know, twilight type things hanging from their heads. Um, so the the helmets and everything will be hidden. Uh, so you won't be able to necessarily wear helmets. Well, you'll be able to wear helmets, let's put it that way, but you won't see them on your characters. And one of the things that this is interesting uh, for in Star Wars The Old Republic means that they're kind of giving up on the idea that they have to make helmets fit every race that comes in the game, so we might see even more species that have head problems coming to the game later on. Come on, guys, give us playable Wookiees. That's all I'm asking. I don't even need to see any clothes. Just let me be a playable Wookiee. That's all. And last but not least, in Guild Wars 2 news, for those of you waiting for Heart of Thorns, the information about the expansion keeps coming out little by little, and this week we learned that the Revenants are gaining access to the Shiro legend, a uh, dual-wielding legend that is coming to your Revenant. That's right, a very DPS-focused legend that you'll be able to slot. So not only did we hear about the Ventari legend last week, which is more of a healing uh, spec for the Revenant, but now we've got our Guild Wars 1 legend of Shiro, uh, with two swords, uh, he has a whole bunch of cool skills called, like one called Rift Slash, which has an unstable miss rift cut into players or enemies, and then after a short amount of time, that explodes and damages anybody else around them. So just imagine that in World vs. World PvP. There's also something called Precision Strike, which is a very quick attack where players throw blades that damage and chills enemies. There's one called Unrelenting Assault, which is a, a quick series of attacks where players blink through the mists and pop all over the place. And Enchanted Daggers, which is, has a, a series of spinning daggers that do damage to foes and simultaneously leeches the life to heal the player. Very, very cool stuff. They, uh, they showed off the Revenant spec on the, the live stream this past Friday over at ArenaNet. You can catch that on YouTube now. Um, and in the meantime, we're just waiting to hear more about other beta events, and hopefully we'll get a chance to play Sh uh, Shiro as well as the, uh, the Ventari, which was playable last weekend. So very cool stuff in Guild Wars 2. If they could only just tell us a release date and give us more information overall about the expansion, I'd be happy. Uh, that does it for this week, folks. Don't forget to tune in to us on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, all those places at MMORPGcom without the dot. If you feel like following me, you can find me on Twitter at TheBillMurphy. As always, don't let a bad pug get you down.